originate those? Well, in part, from the Coriolis Force. Now, the Coriolis Force is an actual force. It's a consequence of inertia on rotating objects, like rotating discs or rotating spheres. But either way, it is still an important thing to discuss, for it has many important uses and implications from weather forecasting to mass flow meters. And given all this, I think it's quite worthy to take a spin on the Coriolis Force. The Coriolis Force is related to the Coriolis Effect, the phenomena where air will rotate around high and low pressure zones, but the two are different. Yet, they're both mathematically described by Gustave Gaspard Coriolis in 1835. So what is the Coriolis Force? The Coriolis force is caused by the fact that the speed of a rotating sphere varies from place to place. To demonstrate this, so you had a rotating sphere and several points along the sphere. Now, points near the equator have to travel farther than points farther away from the equator. And since every single point has to travel around the sphere in the same period of time, points near the equator have to travel faster than points farther away from the equator. Now, see the consequence of this, so you had a glider at the equator. Now at the equator you are traveling around the sphere at the same rate as the ground, but as you travel away from the equator, the ground slows down as you maintain your speed. This means you gotta run the ground and your path bends in the direction of rotation. Now if you're traveling towards the equator, the ground will outrun you and your path will bend away from the direction of rotation. Tell them how the Coriolis force relates to the Coriolis effect. Yeah, yeah. We're how this relates to the Coriolis effect is simple. The Coriolis effect is a consequence of how fluid dynamics works on a rotating sphere. Now, we only have to consider four cases, high and low pressure on the northern and southern hemispheres. Now, fluid dynamics tells us that the air in a high pressure zone will move outwards, and that the air surrounding a low pressure zone will move inwards. But, since we're on the surface of a rotating sphere, as the air travels, its path will bend and the end result, which is much easier to demonstrate, is that the air will spiral around the high and low pressure zones. And that is the Coriolis effect. Hey, why don't I get to say anything? Okay. Because I'm much better there. We'll see about that. The Coriolis force is a potent example of geometry and physics, and its results are everywhere, from weather patterns, ocean currents, to the flight of air flights. It's as an important part, it's as as important. You're right!